please identify yourself and your address when you come forward for the record. Thank you. Greg Marchese. Ashland, a concerned citizen. Back in the spring, we saw the uh, cost assessment for implementing what is now Ordinance 635, the GMO crop ban. And uh, so we know the county is concerned about money. That estimate was 219000 and to be fair, there was a range of costs from 0 to 219 first year costs. That was a little deeper in the report, and the media seized on the high number and challenged the chances of the ordinance. But thankfully, 66% of the voters were radical and wacky enough to think uh, other things were equally important to money, like public health, clean water, viable small farms and local economy, and for the really wacky, uh, the entire web of life and the local ecology. But let's just stick with money. If two farmers can sue Jackson County for a cost of $4 million, let's remember that 170 local farms endorsed this uh, ordinance and are closely affiliated or active members of Our Family Farms Coalition who could also bring lawsuits if their right to farm is impaired by repealing this ordinance. Along with the cost benefit, excuse me, the cost estimate, we should also make a benefit estimate. Uh, we're seeing export markets closing. China last week announced it will not accept uh, alfalfa from regions where GMO, or what's known as Roundup Ready alfalfa, is grown. The, the shipment itself doesn't even need to be tested. If it comes from a region where GMOs are being grown, it's rejected. That is a liability to Jackson County growers, and uh, retaining this ordinance is a benefit. It is an opportunity, it's, uh, purely economically. So uh, as my elected commissioners, I have three things I'm requiring. vigorously, or I would say aggressively, defend this lawsuit on behalf of the 66% uh, of the voters. Fully cooperate and, and uh, support any interveners that would also defend the lawsuit. And by no means allow any injunction or stay to, to put this ordinance on pause while the lawsuit plays out. We are the 66%. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Please, please. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to probably butcher this last name, and I, I, I beg your forgiveness. Susla Affledilla. I'm sorry. Susie, Susie Good morning. Applied. Good morning. And happy holidays to you. Thank you. Same to you, and thank you for listening. I, uh, my name is Susie Ofterhide. I've lived here for 40 years. My address is 321 North Mountain Avenue in Ashland. Um, I like to start with a joke because it's really hard to speak publicly, I think. So when I got here 40 years ago, there was a joke in the Rogue Valley, and the joke was, how do you make a small fortune in the Rogue Valley? I know you guys can't speak, but the way to make a small fortune in the Rogue Valley is to come with a large fortune. That was the joke 40 years ago, and I'm one of the few or many people who came here without a large fortune. So, like... Like the people that you just uh, awarded, people with riding bicycles and developing parks, I came here because it's beautiful, because of the mountains, because of the rivers, because of the air. And I watched organic farming grow in this valley over the last 40 years. I watched people like myself build a business. I am not a farmer. I'm barely a gardener. But I, I believe that this, this econo economy that we have built is very important to all of us. Um, and the beauty, I believe, was developed by what I like to call God. And I think that these seeds that are being um, genetically modified, I think we should question them. I think we should question whether we are really as arrogant as we think we are, that we can improve on something so beautiful. Um, much of Europe is not allowing our, um, GMOs to be grown in their countries. And many of these countries also aren't even putting or, um, GMOs 
in their supermarkets. And part of the reason for this is the precautionary principle. And the precautionary principle is a principle that I would like to see in all of our governments in the United States. And the way that it reads is this. It's a rapid response in the face of possible danger to human, animal, or plant health. It's to protect the environment, in particular, where scientific data, data does not permit a complete evaluation of the risk. We have not thoroughly evaluated these GMOs. Recourse to this principle may, for example, be used to stop distribution or order withdrawal from the market of products likely to be hazardous. Because there's a perceived possible hazard, we should be testing these products before we, the people, become the guinea pigs of them. And then finally, I'd just like to read to you from the Oregon Constitution because not only do I love what's beautiful here, I love democracy or re the republic that we live in. And this is what Article 1, Section 1 of the Oregon Constitution says. It says, we declare that all people, when they form a social compact, are equal in right that all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for the... Has that been three minutes? Yes, yeah, but go ahead and finish that, that particular... Go ahead and finish no, Because I don't often talk. And instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. We elect you guys to protect us, to keep us safe, and hopefully happy, although that's really our own responsibility. And they have at all times a right to alter, reform, or abolish the government in such manner as they may think proper. That is the people. That is us with our inherent rights. So I'm asking you today to support the majority of us as our elected officials and to aggressively defend the people's will regarding Ordinance 635 and support no injunction and cooperate with the interveners. Thank you so much and have a wonderful holiday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please, please, please. Um, Daniel Gregg. Good morning and happy holidays to you. Yeah, same to everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Gregg, a uh, resident of Ashland for the last 15 years and I uh, lived in Josephine County for the 15 before that. Been an organic uh, gardener, farmer for over 40 years. When I first moved to Oregon, got my hands in the soil, and like like Susie and the many of other people, I came here because of the uh, beautiful landscape, pure clean water we have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I brought a couple of visual aids here. These are uh, corn. Uh, we call it rainbow corn. It's, it was a gift from uh, some native people, some North American natives from Utah originally. We've been growing it for 20, 25 years. This, and then uh, I was thinking, so on the way over here, that we, shortly after Thanksgiving it is, and we celebrate Thanksgiving, and part of the abundance that we have in this country is what's been shared with us as settlers coming here. That this corn and the other foods that this represents, they call this the mother of all seeds of all cultivated plants, the corn mother. And when that was shared with us, there was no contract, there was no monetary exchange, there was no limitation on it. Although I thought, just respectfully preserve it, protect it, and so that it, our children, our grand, I'm thinking about my great grandkids this morning, that they can have something that's worth eating. And there's enough evidence, enough documented evidence to, to, to show alarm about the GE technology and the, and, the, and the way that it's been done. And nobody asked us if they could start messing with the DNA of these plants. Nobody asked the native people if they could start, change that. And this is going to, we're talking about the future of the food of, of the human race and the, and the planet. That's what we're talking about here. And there, there's a lot of us here that's... In Jackson County, two to one, that's we're drawing a line in the sand. We're drawing a line right here, and we're saying, no, we don't want this. And and we're asking you, I'm begging you, and I expect you to stand with us, and we will stand behind you. I will speak for myself. I will stand and, and back you guys up if you back us up. We're not going to, like, leave you out there, this lawsuit. And the other thing I wanted to suggest, I don't, you know, I've talked to a few people, and they say, these lawsuits, you can't talk to the people. You can't go there. You have to go through lawyers and the court process. But since you guys are on the front lines, let's 
let's suggest, at least suggest to these people that we um, go through some mediation process. That maybe I, like, I'll put my, you know, I have whatever, uh, whatever resources I have, I'll, I'll donate to a lawyer to help defend us. But I'd rather put it into uh, gas for a tractor to help them take the alfalfa out and convert it to either conventional or organic. We've got a, a farmer that was growing GMO alfalfa, and he supported our ordinance, and he said his organic al alfalfa outdoes his GMO alfalfa, and it's a better pop straight across. It's a better product anyway. So I'd rather support these people and help them transition rather than fight with them in the courts, if at all possible. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I shouldn't have to remind you again, please. Uh, Robert Minear. Good morning, and happy holidays to you. Thank you, sir. You too. For the record, my name is Robert Minear. I am a citizen of Jackson County, and I live in Medford. The issue before us, gentlemen, is really quite important. It's landmark importance. Many will say that these laws that will protect the corporations to come in here and impose their will against the citizens of Oregon are well-settled law. But is it not true that the laws against women to vote were quite well settled for the entire 70 years and more, that the women marched and asked for their rights to be observed? Is it not true that the well settled laws that protected slavery were just corruptions? And in our retrospective view of history, we can see that. We're dealing with that right now. We have corporations, multinational corporations with no allegiance to we the people whatsoever, coming into our territory and through the power of the Commerce Clause and the power of their fictitious personhood are able to, to preempt the ordinances and laws that we the people form in our own communities. It is equally as corrupt as slavery, equally as corrupt as denying women the right to vote. And it is happening now, and it has been happening. Now, at some point, we the people stand up, do we not? And say that the government derives its power from the people. That corporations are fictitious entities, no more deserving of the rights of personhood than a baseball team. How can it be? It's an absurdity. At some point, we have to make a stand. Gentlemen, we are insisting, respectfully so, that you stand with the people of this county and enforce this ordinance without pause. Enforce it, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Peggy Smith. Good morning, Good morning. and happy holidays. Thank you, thank you. My name is Peggy Ann Smith. I'm a resident of Jackson County. I live in Medford. And, and I am one of the 66%, one of the people who voted in May to approve Measure 15119. And now that that measure has been approved by two-thirds of our voters, I'm here to let you know what my expectation is. As elected officials, I expect you to represent us, the majority who voted to turn Measure 15119 into Ordinance 635, which is now on the books. I would like you to stand with us and defend this to really represent the majority vote in this county. And I would encourage you to not accept any injunction that would postpone uh, Ordinance 635 becoming effective. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard Dombrowski. 
Good morning and happy holidays to you. Well, God bless you and Merry Christmas to all Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Richard Dumanowski from West Bedford. Uh, I'm an old goat farmer, been here since 75, and I'm a beekeeper. And I'd like to let you know that the Southern Oregon Beekeepers Association supported 15119. Uh, several occasions voted almost unanimously to support it. And as you know, Alan, Ashland and Talent are bee cities, USA, to protect our pollinators. Uh, I'd like to say that I believe the GMO conflict is, you know, a conflict between big money and big corporations versus individuals, and you can't get any smaller than the individual, the little girls in the beehive. You know, if all 60,000 of the bees in my hive voted, there would be another 60,000 votes, I think, on 15119 support. And I would imagine my bees' motivation is that pollen contamination is doesn't sound too good to them. Uh, if you don't know, pollen is the Gerber baby food of the beehive. Every baby eats pollen. And so I would ask you to support the bees and support uh, all of us who grow flowers and whatnot in our county to uh, support ordinance 635 and oppose any injunction or any slowing down of its implementation on June 6th of this coming year. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Elise Higley? Good morning. Happy holidays. Thank you for having us here today and speaking. Um, I guess I just want to start with, uh, first of all, thank you for your support so far, and thank you for the support of the council talking with our Family Farms Coalition. I am the director. I'm also a family farmer here in Jackson County, so I appreciate what has happened so far. And I just want to remind you of the process and why we got to where we were here and why the majority of Jackson County voted to support this measure. And it was because we knew that family farmers were at risk of being contaminated and were being contaminated by genetically engineered crops. And they were at an economic disadvantage. Um, we know about the international market and how that affects us. Um, reminding you that farming is not an easy job. It is a, a tough industry and we need all the help and protection we can get. And the community really with education and talking with our neighbors really rose to the occasion and realized how the, uh, they needed to be protected. These farmers need to be t protected against genetically engineered crops and these chemical companies and what they're doing in our county. And we voted with the majority and it was a huge feat because now we are this sanctuary um, and we're a preserve for our seed and we're able to farm without fear of being contamination. We're once again able to plant crops that we weren't able to plant when we knew that we were at risk of being contaminated. And um, we are just in this amazing spot right now. We are pre a precedent for the nation and worldwide, and which makes it even more important that we you know, remind ourselves that this is what the people voted. And um, I appreciate so far um, what you have said and suggested that you are defending um, the measure and this um, ordinance and um, really asking for you to not only um, just really be supportive of our Family Farms Coalition um, intervening in the process. Um, not only do we um, offer the legal assistance, we have expert lawyers in this field. They have fought all over the country um, for issues like this and, and helping with genetically engineered crops, um, not interfering and protecting family farmers. Um, we have expert scientists, and then even more, we have close to 200 farmers that are currently being affected by genetically engineered crops. And so I feel like we are just such an asset um, for the county and just really asking, I guess, for a big support, not just a neutral side of it, but a support that our family farms intervenes and also just really urging you to realize the consequences of any injunction, any delay in the effect on June 6th. Because currently, we have been planting uh, crops that, because we know this ordinance is going to go in effect, and or is in effect actually, but on June 6th, we're protected for the next growing season. And we will be all at economic risk if this is delayed in any way. So just thank you again for, for your support. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Donna Breedlove. Good morning and happy holidays. Good morning to you. Thank you. 
Would you identify yourself again, please? Uh, I'm Donna Breedlove. I'm uh, a citizen here in Medf Medford. Thank you. Honorable commissioners, we citizens of Jackson County, only a small representation you see here t today, are here to ask you that you stand together with the Jackson County voters to protect Ordinance 635, the GMO crop, crop ban ordinance. The law filed in the Oregon uh, Circuit Court against the GMO crop ban is crafted specifically to overturn a law that was passed by, as you well know by now, a very large majority of voters. That lawsuit not only ignores the wishes of Jackson County citizens, but directly benefits the makers of GMO seeds and the companion pesticides that they sell to go with them. Multinational corporations like Monsanto and Syngenta do not care about the threat of GMO pollen contamination to the crops of Jackson County family farms. And while two local GMO Roundup Ready alfalfa farmers are the named plaintiffs in that suit, it is the, quote, agriculture and biotechnology organizations assisting the farmers, as reported in the Mail Tribune, who would gain the most by overturning our local law. We need you, our Jackson County Commissioners, as our elective representatives, to defend the will of the people and to not agree to any legal injunction stopping the GMO crop ban ordinance from going into full effect this next June. We respectfully ask you, Mr. Brendan Thal, Mr. Skundrick, and Mr. Raker, Please stand together with us as your neighbors to defend this law. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Andrew Schwartz. I never get calls. I don't know why all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Good morning Thank and happy holidays to you. Sick. I appreciate that. My name is Andrew Schwartz. I live in the Applegate Valley. I'm the owner of Ridgeline Meadows Farm. I'm here to represent the young farmers, the next generation of organic farmers coming up in this valley. I attended the Seed Academy this summer at Seven Seeds Farm in Williams, where we spent five days exchanging knowledge on the techniques of seed saving, especially organically open pollinated non GMO seeds. I am specifically looking to pursue seed saving as a large part of my business and there were over another dozen farmers there who were all young, enthusiastic and dedicated farmers who want to stay here and are very excited about this ordinance passing and looking forward to the security knowing that we will be in this sanctuary and able to produce our seeds without any worry of contamination from other crops where we have no control over them crossing with us. So I just ask you to stand strong behind this next generation of young farmers and the rest of the community to uphold this ordinance and let us continue and, and try as, as hard as we will to be successful in our endeavors. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Gala Barros. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Roy Selder? Selden? Did I mispronounce it so poorly that you didn't? <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> okay, great. That's right. Yes, sir, please come forward and forgive me. I am a third grade reader, so I want you to know that. So. Uh, good morning. Good morning and welcome and uh, happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you. I'm Ray Seidler. I live in Ashland, and I'm a 44-year resident of this wonderful state of Oregon. Uh, as a senior U.S. EPA scientist, which seems like a long time ago, I was in charge of research on the risks of genetically engineered organisms. Uh, that was in the mid-1980s, and I had concerns about their effects on the environment. Uh, you know, for example, what if regulators made a mistake and approved a crop and out it went, could we recall it? And what about its genetic uh, dispersal? At the time, the concerns were theoretical because there was no data available on these new products, but today 
there is data and a huge economic and environmental problem associated with genetic, genetically engineered crops, as you've heard already. Soon, farmers growing non-GMO crops discovered that some consumers, maybe many, here and abroad, buy GMO contaminated crops. Many of us in this room worked hard last spring to explain this problem to the voters of Jackson County, and we all know what happened there. So let me get real practical with you. Let's home in on genetically engineered alfalfa. If plant stems or pollen or seeds contaminate a non-GMO crop, here's what has happened. History. Washington State, farmer had his crop refused for export. Roundup-resistant alfalfa grown in Idaho in two crop years spread to Montana and Wyoming. That was especially important because it contaminated so-called pure foundation seed stock. Colorado State University scientists had documented the spread of alfalfa pollen in 83% of their off-farm samples that they analyzed. The USDA has recently told us U.S. exports a GMO alfalfa shipped to China in quarantine. Now, two local farmers are growing genetically engineered alfalfa planted recently, and they filed this lawsuit. When GMO and non-GMO products are mixed, everyone loses. The same will happen locally if we allow genetically engineered alfalfa, or for that matter, other genetically engineered crops to grow in our county. I've recently discovered in our county that there are honey farmers and alfalfa farmers that need this protection. They're not growing genetically engineered crops and they fear that they'll be compromised in selling their crops if they become contaminated. Sadly, some of our farmers don't even know at this time that they're facing a risk. So in finishing, let the people speak again. By allowing this process to go through the court system, this is how democracy is supposed to work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Christina Marley uh, Johnson. Good morning. Happy holidays. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Christina Marlia Johnson. My address is 1616 Alta Vista Road, Eagle Point, Oregon. Uh, daughter of Kent and Gemma Marlia Johnson, granddaughter of Roy and Betty Ann Marlia, who built their home and raised cattle out in Eagle Point, 40 acres out there for their entire lives until they've passed away. Fan the land is still in our family. Um, I'm here to address my concerns as a mother and a young farmer, um, my partner out there and I are in the process of buying land here in Jackson County. He has been leasing the farmland for five years and owns and operates Lakota's Garden, a small scale non-GMO farm, not organic. Maybe we'll decide to certify at some point, but we're very clearly non-GMO. We have no intentions of growing GMO crops ever. Um, we've been approached, he was approached, I think it was three or four years ago, by Syngenta asking to buy out his charred crop because of cross-contamination issues, and he refused because he would not support any GMO growing in the area. Um, but that then created a problem for him in that he couldn't sell his charred crop because of the patent issues the way they are. So um, my main concern is the way the state of Oregon is showing up in handling this GMO crisis. And I, I, I feel like that's why many of us work so hard at this county level as citizens and residents and voters to get this passed in May. Um, I dedicated hundreds of volunteer hours walking through my neighborhoods in Eagle Point with my daughter uh, you know, letting people know why we want, what we're concerned about, why we want to see this pass. I want to see those investments of my energy 
um, protected by the county commissioners, by our local law enforcement process. Um, I also just want to address the state and Katie Koba, who made a comment on the record during during the election process that it's mainly people from California who moved up here who support the measure in passing. She that she made that comment. This is a who was appointed by the governor to head the task force, the GMO task force for the state of Oregon, which in my eyes has done nothing so far. Um, so I'm a third generation Oregon, Oregon resident and looking at farming as my career and raising my family that way. So I just want to be clear that this is not all Californians moving up here to when I was going door to door, it was conservatives, liberals, we're all in this together. So 66% doesn't speak lightly. Thank you for listening. Um, the three points I just need to make clearly, do I fully expect you to defend this as our county commissioners. I encourage you to allow the intervene interveners to support this process. And I, um, the third point is slipping my mind right now, but other folks will make it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Schechter. Schechter. Good morning. Happy holidays. Good morning. My name is Ryan. I live in Little Applegate, uh, Jackson County here. Um, I'm not here to remind you of the 66% of the people that voted uh, to say that we don't want GMOs in our county. I'm, I'm not here to bring up the questionable uh, science behind GMOs and the fact that they're mainly pushed by corporations. You know all that. Um, you know how passionate we are about this. We live in a community where we appreciate clean air, clean water, good food. Those are very essential to a lot of people that live here. Um, what I am here to remind you of is that there's a wave happening right now. People are starting to look at their elected representatives. We're starting to look at everybody and we're making you accountable for what you've said. We're making you accountable for backing us, the people, and not the corporations. Um, we're seeing a wave all over our country, all over our world of people standing up, of getting in the streets, of saying, we won't take this anymore. And right now, I'm, I'm here to say that we won't take this anymore. Um, we expect you, our elected representatives, to stand up and tell this corporation, no. There will be no GMOs in Jackson County. And if that doesn't happen, we, the people, will take to the streets. And we're, we're done. We're done being screwed. Thank you very much. Christina Lefevre. Good morning and happy holidays. Same to you, commissioners. And actually, I wanted to start off saying congratulations. Oh, I should say my name, right? Thank Christina you. Christina Lefevre, Ashland, Oregon. And so I wanted to say congratulations to commissioners Rashore and Skundrick on your upcoming retirement from the board. I know you will enjoy not attending meetings like this soon. <laughs> However, let me say that your pending retirements do worry me a bit because it means that two of you no longer have skin in the game, as they say, regarding this measure. And the voters of Jackson County who voted for Measure 15119, now Ordinance 635. So many of us are here today to represent the 66%, you know that number by heart now, of the Jackson County voters who voted for Measure 15119. To stress to you the importance of upholding the vote, the pass with such a strong majority. In fact, I think Jackson County is lucky to have so many concerned, committed citizens. If every state, if every county in the country were like Jackson County, I think this place would be a better place. Um, I was glad to be here today to see the awards that you've given to your employees and to know that each one of you love living here and care so much about Jackson County and making it a better place. That's why so many of us here are here. I moved here from Georgia. Let me tell you, this is a better place. And all of us want to make this county a better place. So I'm glad to have been here to um, see this. So. Back to why I'm standing before you. Um, strongly encouraging this Board of Commissioners to not agree to any injunction that would allow Ordinance 635 to be put on hold. And no matter how much outside counsel you may be receiving from the biotech companies that are assisting the two GMO alfalfa farmers. 
Uh, those biotech companies do not live here, and they certainly don't appreciate this wonderful Rogue Valley. And finally, we are asking, of course, the commissioners to defend Ordinance 635 and to allow our Family Farms Coalition to intervene to bring their expertise and perspective to the case to help you defend our vote. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Michael Framson. Good morning and happy holidays. Thank you. Um, I, like Danny Jordan, do not like speaking in public. And Would you please identify yourself, though, sir? Well, Michael Frampson doesn't like speaking okay. in public. <laughs> Very good. And at the risk of embarrassing himself, he's doing it. Um, because I felt this issue deserved the risk of embarrassment. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone in this room that the reason this is an issue in Jackson County is because there was a policy crafted at the federal level where Jackson County was not at, did not have a seat at the table. Our farmers were not consulted. So when the farmers, and I became aware that something was going on here in 2011, I didn't know what. But it got my attention. No longer could I just push this aside and say it didn't, it didn't involve me, because it did. It involved my neighbors, the farmers. Um, so when the farmers learned that GE crops were being grown here, they turned to every level of government for, to address this issue. They turned to the feds, who did nothing. They turned to the state who did nothing. And sadly, the county was in the best position to do something, but nothing happened. And that's why we're here today. It was left to the farmers to craft a solution. It may not be perfect. Nothing is. Nothing that man does is perfect. But we did the best we could. So now we have this ordinance, and I, I want to encourage you to do everything within your ability to defend it. Let the farmers intervene, and do not agree to any injunction. Anecdotally, I was in um, Colorado this summer, and I was wearing one of the green hats that some of us are wearing, because I actively did work in this campaign. And one of the farmers there asked, What's this Our Family Farms Coalition? And I explained what Jackson County did. And he looked at me and he actually shook my hand and said, thank you, because he cannot grow crops without fear of contamination and how that makes his life and farming untenable. We have that here. We have a brand that's worth protecting. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, our last speaker on this particular issue is uh, Chris Hardy. All right, Chris, I saw you come in. Good morning. Happy Good morning, holidays to you. Happy holidays. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Chris Hardy. I'm Ashland uh, resident, farmer, Jackson County. Uh, uh, in 2013, we lost our seed contract, our farm contracted the year before to produce um, a crop that would be impacted by the growing of genetically engineered crops that were just down the road from us um, by a multinational company and that kind of uh, led um, that that is pretty is consistent with my experience in Jackson County and in southern Oregon uh, 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 having talked to hundreds of farmers across the region that have or feel they are threatened or uh, impacted by by not knowing where these crops are and uh, knowing that, that they're being allowed in the county uh, directly impacts their, their bottom line and their ability to be able to farm and, and operate um, without the, the, you know, to, to have integrity for what their farm believes in, which is, is not uh, growing patented and genetically engineered seeds. Um, Two-thirds of Jackson County voters, as you well know, in uh, earlier this year voted to support the Ordinance 635 to ban the growth 
of genetically engineered crops because they understood uh, the importance of protecting our farmers in the area and, and understanding the idea of coexistence uh, being a myth. Um, and this is work, as you well know, uh, that has been ongoing for nearly three years now uh, with over a thousand businesses, farms, and community-based organizations that have stepped forward to make this explicitly clear that, that this is not um, something in the vision that they see or, or potentially would impact their bottom lines economically. So, um, so I'm asking you to defend the, the Ordinance 635 and uh, allow our Family Farms Coalition to serve as an intervener and I'm also asking you to um, uh, to, to please not allow an injunction um, if it is served to you and uh, understand uh, again that the imperative of defending this 635 ordinance is is to protect our farmers from the clear threats that genetically engineered crops pose in, in uh, this world of, of, uh, uh, of contamination where we cannot stop nature from from carrying out her process so it's it comes down to coexistence and uh, uh, please um, do not agree to any injunction if it is served to you thank you okay thank you and your board thanks for everyone who came in and spoke to this issue thank you very much uh, we listened and that's an opportunity for the public to, to state, state their their feelings on the issue so thank you for everyone here appreciate that. Now, is there anyone else wishing to speak on another issue before your board? It's not on the agenda. Okay, again, thank you. Hearing none, we'll move on. The next item on the agenda, oops, there goes our audience. <laughs> we have an agenda right over there, sir. If somebody want to hand him that, that'd be great. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. We'll wait for just a second as people clear the room. Thank you.